mercy. But one second, I want you to lift up your voice and say, My Lord, my Lord, show me that line. 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 Show me that way. Lord, show me that line. Where you want me to dwell. Where you want me to dwell. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, show me that line. Father, we love you. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. I don't know if you have an opportunity to speak to one another. I want to command you to go around and just welcome one or two people before the presence of the Lord. Have that fellowship and come back to your city. Oh, 
reshape you, reshape your attitude, reshape your character, reshape everything about you until he brings you to a place where he can say from heaven, this is my beloved son or my beloved daughter to whom I will please. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the mandate of God. That is the vision of God for every life and for everyone that calls him my father. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ. And I told you that throughout history, right from, the, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, we have encountered men that their life have pleased God, irrespective of their situation and circumstances. The, the things they went through, the persecution, the hardship, and everything, they still far that I, will, I choose this life because I want to please him. Hallelujah. May your life please God. Amen. And the question for all of us is when you go home, ask yourself a question and say, how is my life for pleasing to God? Hallelujah. Sometimes we're always looking at somebody, his life is not pleasing to God, but we fail to do self-examination. Hallelujah. So usually that hand, they point to pastor all the time. <laughs> Are you that one? Of them? Uh, what did he say? How did he preach the message and all that kind of stuff? If you know how to preach very well, why? Please with you. Every man will be 
When God accepts you, people have no choice but to accept you. Sometimes we seek the approval of men and refuse to, uh, to seek the endorsement of God. Hallelujah. Always seek God. And when God approves you, people will never reject you. So, it's a lie that is yelling, not coming to God because you want God to bless you. Hallelujah. God has already committed himself to bless you. You don't remind him of his responsibility. He is a faithful God. Nobody prays and says, Lord, oh, today, Lord, please, let sun shine. Whether you pray or you don't pray or you fast, the sun will shine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, let the sun don't shine to this person or to other guys. Whether you pray or not, because that is his faithfulness. That's true. He's committed that to humanity. He doesn't have to pray that way because that is his responsibility. His faithfulness endure forever. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. His faithfulness endure forever. So, what am I saying? When we are talking about getting to know God, it's not that we are coming to God to bring our needs, our problems to God. No. God knows what you are going through. God knows what you are passing through, your experiences. And He has the power and the capacity to change that situation. It's, it's just an attitude of, Lord, I need to know you more. I want to have that intimacy with you. Hallelujah. Amen. One other thing I talked about was just focusing on the things of eternity. Hallelujah. The Bible said now that you are now redeemed. Let your focus change. Many of us focus so much in the material things. Hallelujah. Somebody sent me something very profound during the week by one Canadian cardiologist. He said something very profound. He said, you will never reach a pinnacle of success in life until you in life don't desire to have money or to have title and being famous. Are you here one? To the degree where your money is not in your life and being famous or title is irrelevant in your life, you will never experience what is called true success. True success is not in material things. It's the things that have a kind of value. Hallelujah. Amen. So focusing on the things that matters, that has everlasting value, is the way to go. And not the things that have, will perish, that has a temporary moment and moment. And that is the problem we have sometimes. We so much are wrapped around our happiness, our joy, into material things. And as soon as those things disappear, people start crying. Hallelujah. We are used to work. I used to tell people I was in one of those places one day in Florida. You know, when they're going to sack you, they don't give you advance notice. It's always in the middle of the day. Everybody come to the break room or conference room. We have something. You know that something is about to happen. Gather everybody there and announce that from now, from today, the company is no more than went to the five o'clock. You hear grown up, you see grown up men sharing tears. And women cry. I said, Why are you crying? The first day you enter here, you should know that this thing will not last long. That's true. Hallelujah. Yeah. You should know that it doesn't last long. Don't build your faith, don't build your joy around everything. Let me tell you something. With the job or with that job, God is committed to take care of you. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. With job or with that job, God is committed to take care of you. Are you here about that? Or tomorrow you may decide to go back to her father's 
on three more key things that I want to focus on. Now, the number four thing is the life that bears fruit. A life that bears fruit. A life that bears fruit. Open with me the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Please, Matthew chapter, we have to run because I don't have much time. If you take it, no, take it, no, I'm just going to just measure some forward do it some things on Wednesday. I begin to really focus on the real thing. Matthew chapter 7 verse 15 and 17. Oh my God. Hallelujah. In this project, yes, thank you, man of God. Beware of false prophet. Would you come to you in sheep clothing? But inwardly, they are what? Go to the next one. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather a grapes for tons or fields for tons? Now, what the Bible is saying there, that the way to judge people and look at people, both those of us that are in the public ministry, is not by the eloquency of the message. It's not by the title. It's never by the church you belong to. You hear some people that say, hey, I belong to this church. It's not. It's by the fruit you are bearing. It's by the fruit you are bearing. What differentiates you as a really child of God, as a born again Christian, is by the fruit you are bearing. Hallelujah. It's the fruit of your bearing. And bearing fruit is an evidence of the new life in Christ Jesus. Bearing fruit is an evidence of the new life. Are you hearing what I said? You know, Corinthians has said, now all things are passed away. Behold, all things now are what? New. The things, when we notice that the things are new, is by the kind of lifestyle you live. Now, bearing fruit has nothing to do with speaking in tongues or just winning souls. Those are not. I wish I had more time. Bearing fruit may have to be an inward life because we live from in to out. It's not by appearance or what you put on, by cheap clothing and mix up in the church. It's by your lifestyle. The kind of lifestyle you live shows whether the kind of fruit you are bearing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's your life bearing fruit. And of course, the phenomena or the, the, the system of bearing fruit is a life, is a phenomenon of life. For everything that God created, everything that lives to bear fruit. Now the question is whether it's a good fruit or a bad fruit. Hallelujah. So in your life, you are not in between. You are either bearing a good fruit or you are bearing a bad fruit. As long as you are living, you are bearing a fruit. Directly or indirectly. Because that is what the principle of life. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the principle of life. Can I show you that it's not so the agenda of creation? Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, down to 27 and 28, when God created man, one of the mandates of creation is that they shall bear fruit. They shall increase. They shall but how do you increase? You increase by what? By bearing fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. By bearing fruit. So a life that pleases God is a life that bears good fruit. Now, because of time, I can't detail this message. Now, how do you tell the bear fruit? Now, the principle of bearing fruit is this. You can never bear fruit alone. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fruit, you can't bear fruit alone. You must depend on something in order to bear fruit. Because every tree that is not rooted in the ground, where it got the nutrients, can never survive. That place of bearing fruit, no force. And that is why Jesus Christ said, Abide in me. If you really want to bear good fruit, the first principle is to abide in Christ. Now, the word abide it simply means to take your resident. How many of you are resident of United States? Plenty. Are you hearing what I said? All of us. 
Including some of us that are sitting in the door, that kind of stuff. And some people that are on their way now to become this. Amen. And the world presidents is men taking permanence in a place, residing in a place. That's why when they give you that card, and when you travel out of the country, if you spend more than six months, when you come back, that thing is void. The world knows what all this is mean more than Christians. Because they know that you are not supposed to. This is where you dwell. For the fact that you leave this place and go somewhere else means that either you don't like this place or something is taking your pleasure somewhere. Yeah, they want to know. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. Now, so that is the same thing that Jesus said, appear, abide in me. It takes residence in me. And as you take residence in me, I have the capacity to nurture you, to mature you, to grow you, to transform you, so that you will begin to bear the same kind of fruit that I have here. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sure. Now, that is what I don't have much time. But let me go to the focus of my message today. The next thing is what I tie to the living the life of faith. The language of faith is not new. But it gets deep. And I really want to challenge you, every one of you, that the one who should do great things and believe in God for great things, you need to hear this message. And you hear what I'm saying. Now, I'm going to show you something on the screen. If Proverbs can project, project that. And on Wednesday, I just expanded on this. The life that pleases God is a life living the life of faith. There are three systems of perception that rules man. Listen here. There are three systems. 